Drake Chenault feature programs have brought dollars and ratings to hundreds of stations throughout the world. You're about to sample two of them, the golden years and the top 100 of the 60s, hosted by Robert W. Morgan. That's me. First, the golden years, a series of 17 one-hour specials, each centering on the music and events of a single year. Here's a telescope version of the hour covering 1965. Five thousand Marines, the first American combat forces, land in Vietnam. Pope Paul is welcomed to New York City, marking the first time a pope has visited the Western Hemisphere. The Sound of Music wins an Oscar for Best Picture of the Year, and the Los Angeles Dodgers defeat the Minnesota Twins four games to three in the World Series. The Golden Year, 1965. Help, I need somebody. Help me, help me. Beatles and Help, the title song from one of their motion pictures. By 1965, the Beatles' influence on rock and roll was profound and obvious. The four youngsters from Liverpool had changed the course of pop musical history and were making history with every passing day. January, Lyndon Johnson was sworn in for his first full term as President of the United States. April, a military coup toppled the civilian government of Santo Domingo, and U.S. troops were sent in to protect American citizens. The Golden Year, 1965. Uno, dos, one, two, tres, cuatro. The words made no sense, but the beat was unmistakable, and Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs had scored their first hit with Wooly Bully. Another group, the Birds from Los Angeles, were also successful their first time out. Roger McGuinn talked about how the group was formed and their release of a Bob Dylan song. The Birds got together in 64, actually, uh, hanging around Hollywood. Uh, all of us were independent musicians, folk singers, basically. When I first heard the song, I didn't think it had hit potential. And uh, as we got into it, uh, when we finally got it down as a master in the studio, I thought it was really a, a good sounding record. But I, I, I was really surprised that it turned out to be a number one. The Birds, who spelled their name B-Y-R-D-S, one year later their turn, turn, turn would equal the success of Mr. Tambourine Man. A supreme Motown sound next. Hi, girls. How do you feel at the end of the day? Too tired to go out? Since within California, then right now. It's faster and cheaper when you dial long distance direct. The Golden Year. 1965. <laughs> The Supremes, in the middle of a hit streak of songs written by the team of Holland Dozier Holland, Stop in the Name of Love made it four number one songs in a row for the girls, America's favorite female group. Roger Miller wrote his own 1965 hit, and it became his biggest ever. Roger recalled how King of the Road came about. I don't know, I was just driving along, uh, going into Chicago one morning, and uh, I saw this sign on the side of the road. It was advertising traders for sale or rent. And I just, uh, I don't know, I just kind of rung a bell. So I walked around with it in my mind for two, three days, sat down one night and wrote it. Trailer for sale or rent. Ooh, no pets. I ain't got no cigarettes, uh, but two hours of Beginning with the success of King of the Road, Roger Miller's career went into full swing, and he later hosted his own network TV show. Bob Dylan was already a folk music hero, but in 65, the rock and roll audience discovered him when for the first time he performed with an amplified instead of an acoustic guitar. Once upon a time, you dress so fine, do the bumps of dime in your prime.
Like a Rolling Stone, Dylan 65. His choice of material, style, and charisma would soon make him a legend. The son of a famous comedian throws his hat into the rock ring next in the golden year 1965. If you want to have fun, Dylan. Newco's good as gold For a very little silver The golden year 1965 young son of comic Jerry Lewis, formed a rock band called the Playboys and launched his own showbiz career with a hit called This Diamond Ring. One of the most meaningful lyrics from 1965 was What the World Needs Now is Love by Jackie DeShannon. I felt definitely there was going to be a great change in music since uh, the Beatles had such an impact at that time and uh, the people that were coming up were, were listening to really, really good music, fine music. Burt Backrack and Hal David were producing me at the time, and they selected several songs, and we were rehearsing the songs. And Hal David said, I'd like you to play uh, What the World Needs Now for Jackie, Burt. And he did play it, and uh, I fell in love with the song, and we rehearsed, of course, the tunes that we were doing on the session, but I think everybody right from the beginning felt that uh, this was definitely the one. The songwriting team of John Lennon and Paul McCartney of the Beatles had started a trend of awareness of who had written the hit songs. What the World Needs Now is Love was the product of Burt Bacharach and Hal David, who had already penned such hits as Baby It's You, Liberty Valance, Wishin' and Hopin', and What's New Pussycat, and were just getting started. The unmistakable Bacharach David sound would literally make a star of Dion Warwick, and Jewel Aiken's claim to fame happened in 65. <laughs> Jewel Aikens, the birds and the bees, and the stones are next when the golden year 1965 rolls on. If you drive a Cadillac and you're not happy with somebody else's service department, Media Television in Los Angeles. Metro Media Television. Nineteen sixty-five. With a funkier appearance, sound, and image than the Beatles, the Rolling Stones had become a monster rock act. In 1965, Satisfaction had a five-week ride on the pop charts. The English musical invasion had begun to affect adults as well as the youth of the nation. Long hair, Edwardian suits, and the mod look were seen in every walk of life. The times, they were a-changing. August. Riots in the Watt section of Los Angeles took thousands of troops and law enforcement officials five days to end. Everybody talking about the seven sun. September, Hurricane Betsy ravaged the Gulf Coast, killing 100 and causing $1 billion damage. The name ain't Barry, crossed the Mersey, baby, I'm yours. November, a massive power failure on the ninth of the month blacked out the entire northeast.